This is Twit. Hey folks, I'm Ant Pruitt. And what do you get your favorite tech geek that has everything? A Club Twit gift subscription, of course. Twit podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news podcasts available. With the Club Twit subscription, they get access to all of our podcasts ad free. They also get access to our members only discord, access to exclusive outtakes behind the scenes and special content such as AMAs, which I just love hosting, plus exclusive shows such as hands on Mac, hands on Windows and the untitled Linux show. Purchase your geeks gift at twit.tv slash club twit and it will thank you every day. This is the graph total total Apple revenue. 90 Total revenue, governor. Ninety billion dollars. It's uh, what is it? A record quarter for the third record quarter? fiscal for, for, fiscal fourth calendar third quarter. Q, yeah, Q four. It is once again a record for app. It's you know it is the most boring and yet impressive run of the company that you think couldn't possibly generate more cash, continuing to generate <laughs> more cash every single quarter, even with the, I mean, if you want to talk about foreign exchange headwinds, boy, can I tell you a story <laughs> about it? But basically, even though the, uh, a lot of the places where Apple is charging for products, uh, the dollar is so strong that it makes their profit from there and their revenue from there um, diluted because yeah. the dollar is so strong. They still manage somehow to put up 90 billion in revenue. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. You know, it's a machine that generates money at this point. That's what it is. 83.4 this year. Last time, 67, 64.7 this year. Two years ago, this time two years ago. I mean, it is a record. Also, it's the end of their year, their fiscal year. So we also get... Uh, was it a good year? <laughs> of course yeah, it was. I mean, it was a big, very big good surprise. Year. It was a very good year for Max and maybe everything else except iPads. Uh, the iPad iPads. was kind of flat, but but yeah, I mean, it is it is. It, I got to put up my charts for the annuals now that the the year is closed. But right. it's the same story, which is yeah. up, up, up. Uh, Apple is so much more, you know, a cash generating company than it was. Uh, it, the rise in the in the twenty tens really is the breathtaking thing, and right. they continue doing that. and And that's the that's the most impressive thing. Is twenty twenty eight point seven yeah. billion profit in uh, the last three mm -hmm. months. And, yeah, and uh, it's funny because their CFO keeps talking about how they want to go cash neutral. Because remember, there was a point where they had more than a hundred billion in cash, like lit, stuffed in mattresses somewhere. A uh, hundred billion, billion with a B, and yeah. it's like it, it's like almost Sisyphean. Or like remember Brewster's Millions that that movie where. <laughs> A guy had to g try to give away mil yeah, a million dollars, yeah. and he couldn't. It's, not it's easy. a little like Luke. This is Maestri, uh, Maestri's billions. He should have bought Luca Twitter. Maestri, the they should have. They should have bought Twitter. They could have got it cheap. A hundred billion in profit this year. Five this five years they've been trying at least five years to to reduce their cash position, and they still have almost fifty billion dollars in cash. So like they can't give it away. They well they, they do. buy back stock. They, well, they do buy dividends. Back stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they and, and they and, acquire apparently a company a month. They're acquiring and still they just can't get rid of all yeah. this cash. Year over One. year total revenue change eight <laughs> percent. <laughs> well, and and the and I think that the, the 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 thing that's interesting is a lot of people say, well, the shareholders are getting all this money back, but those those shareholders, a lot of them are employees. <laughs> you know, so so that that's you know, true. This that's is, good. That's true. You know, so we have to remember that, that it, the a lot of the employees are almost all the employees or all the employees, I think, if they're if they're actually an employee of Apple, are getting some version of stocks, and so these are by pushing that by prov providing dividends as well as buybacks, those are all increasing uh, value for their employees uh, in addition to the, the, the would shareholders. You, would you rather as a shareholder have dividends? A buyback increases the value of your stock because there are fewer shares. Right. Would you rather have dividends or buybacks? It's good for the company to have buybacks. I, um, I think they do uh, both specifically because some people would like to yeah. get money back like dividends that's cash money. in your pocket you, you literally yeah. get cash yeah. in your pocket exactly yeah. whereas and it's also the buybacks are just driving the stock upward theoretically right, right. and it's also a taxable event i believe dividends are ah so, that's the other side of that yeah so that's so that's so money's I mean, always a taxable event to... when you get it <laughs> the problem is you don't get right. it when so, you sell the stock a dividend you right. get yeah yeah right. 11.5 billion mac revenue it looks like uh in all the quarters you've gotten this graph it's the best it, mac it, it quarter is. ever 
it's the best Mac quarter ever, and three out of the last four or four out of the last five, uh, depending on how you want to count it, you could actually say that seven out of the last nine quarters are the best nine or best seven Mac quarters ever. Um, I actually think maybe it's even true that like the last nine quarters are the nine best Mac quarters ever. It is the Mac has never generated as much revenue as it is I'm now. I'm glad to hear that as a it Mac is lover. A, I'm glad to yeah, hear and, that. Yeah, and it's weird because sequentially it, it's way up from last quarter. But the reason that Apple went into, if you remember back to this like late spring, early summer, where we were all trying to buy Macs, like Mac Studios, and they were yeah. th a three month delay. Yeah. Basically, they're, all their factories that assemble Macs are in Shanghai and they shut down. Down, and they they spent most of last quarter behind, and so they didn't sell very many Macs last quarter because they couldn't get them. In fact, so revenue quarter, uh, last quarter was down ten percent year over yeah, year, but it exactly. was up twenty five percent this year. They fulfilled all those orders, fulfilled a quarter's worth of orders, and filled the channel with Macs, you know, to go on store shelves or be at Amazon or wherever. And that's part of the reason it was up so much this time is that they yeah. were they were really kind of fulfilling last uh, yeah. the all the the demand that they weren't be able being able to meet uh, last quarter. But it does. I Especially mean, if you just look at this graph, uh, where uh, this is the dividing point. It's obvious that the silicon, silicon silicon has been a huge, huge boon for Apple. And and in the PC side, Intel and Qualcomm are still struggling to do anything like the uh, the efficiency of this Apple Silicon. It really is and a it's success. Really, and the problem is, is it's really hard to do if you're not Apple. So Apple has now really forced people to play a game that only it can really play, which is that they own... They own the IDE. They own the um, they owned the operating system. They own the hardware, and by doing that, it allows you to integrate a bunch of uh, a bunch of pieces that everybody else has to find their way to a consortium. They have to all agree on it. So you have all these different companies with all these different ideas of how they want to run it, and they have to all agree to build something that looks like an M1 or an M2, and that is incredibly difficult. Or you know, and or and as so. I would put it, it's a walled garden all the way down. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's you know, it's, yeah. everywhere. Eco if they bought the plants that made the chips, you know, like, yeah. you know, like that that's the, the one thing stuff. they don't. But you know, in a way, they kind of own TSMC. Yeah. I mean, they they certainly uh, they're tightly bound at the hip. iPad revenue kind of flat. Not so good. I think it's hard to prove that you need a new one. I think yeah. that's the. I mean, like they're too I, good. That's an example I, of something that's too good. Well, it's. It's that, that I, I don't think that, that we're seeing very many apps. And this is the problem that PCs have is that Excel runs as fast as it's ever going to run. You know, and so the and there's just a lot of people that only use a basic version. That There's a lot of PCs out there, but they're not they're not all being used in a creative area that really pushes the envelope. And so there's not many times when you feel like you hit the top end of your iPad with the apps that are out there. And I yeah. think that that's a, that's a real challenge is to encourage and even, I mean, I think that, I mean, and this would be hard for Apple to do, but I, I do think that like what Epic has done with the mega grants is genius, you know, which is that we have, we want to see people push the envelope out. And, and so we're going to, you know, we have a fund to give you money um, to develop certain kinds of things. So if Apple was pushing to, you know, look for, you know, we're looking for things that are really going to push the performance of the iPad. Um, any money, any dollar they put into that would probably push, um, would make $10 on the other end because it would drive people to buy new iPads because there's a really cool app that really uses right. it. But we don't see much of that at all. Apple mm. is, historically doesn't do stuff like that. But boy, no, they they, don't. if you're trying to get rid of some of that cash, Luca, hand it mm -hmm. off, you know. <laughs> you see every, every uh, creator space like YouTube and TikTok and Facebook all have creator funds where they give right. money. Epic, that's interesting that Epic does that for developers to use. The Mega Grant is really uh, probably one of the best ones out there because it, it, there's no strings attached. If they give you the money, if they, the funny thing is if it's it's basically talking to people about it that have gotten some of them, if it's under $25,000, they don't really need to see anything. Like they just they just need to think Here, it's a good idea. Just have like, some like money. They're not, yeah. They said if it's over 25000 yeah, you probably need to give us a business plan. Yeah. <laughs> like what, what you might do with this. But if it's under $25,000, eh, you know, like it, this, look, this looks like it. And, and what they're doing is, is they really are engaging and and it at before the troubles with apple all of us you know were just paying it we were like oh it might be unity or or um or unreal and then as soon as the epic grants came in everyone went unreal and then and then when when epic got into the fight with apple everyone was like well we don't know yet and so they really that was that's why i've always feel like that was such an unforced error so you think apple part. should do the same with 
pro pro apps on the uh, on the tablet on iOS. High performance apps, I would say, you know, for yeah. pros in different ways. I mean, for in science, uh, in uh, media, drive obviously. That, yeah, you could drive iPad sales by having those apps available. That are only that are really taking full advantage yeah, of the yeah. of the hardware, which yeah. I just don't see anything, almost anything Nothing. out there pushing. I yeah. mean, LumaFusion pushes it pretty hard. You know, is, is a good example of something that is using up that iPad for all all it's worth. Um, but uh, but there's not that many apps out there that do that. Well, the other, the, I think the other consideration here is that a lot of the a lot of the background information that was given in the in the actual earnings call had to do with not necessarily. Oh well, we're getting a lot of people switching from uh, unprecedented year for people switching from uh, iPhone, excuse me, Android to iPhone. Unprecedented number of new Mac users. Unprecedented new sales. Of blah blah blah. Less because of uh, our products are wonderful, are superior. People are getting onto it. People are really excited about it. And a lot of the stuff that's in the call actually explains that there is there are extenuating circumstances. For instance, what Jason was saying earlier that. One of the reasons for such a stellar year uh, for Macs uh, and uh, and iPhones is the pent up demand. There was a lot of opportunities that they missed this quarter last year because of supply constraints and not simply being able to manufacture enough of them. So a lot of the people who didn't buy last year were had that money still under the mattress and were ready to buy next year. And also, there's the uh, there's the uh, I think two or three times they mentioned how well they're doing in uh, uh, Mexico, uh, India, Vietnam, uh, and a couple other countries that they typically don't really talk about. So we have a lot of people who are essentially new money coming into the iPhone market. Not that they've never sold there before, but but now that they're really really being now that they're they're. Uh, Apple is being more aggressive towards making sure that they're selling to everybody who wants an iPhone in the world, no matter where they are. You get a lot more people switching from Android because those are going to be certainly Android's uh, strongholds. So there's a lot of subtext here that comes uh, th that comes down to not just uh, the iPad needs to have more professional apps or the strategy is this or people aren't really responding to that. But a lot uh, has to do with simply that this is the cadence of how people buy things and why certain uh, certain valves are open some and certain other valves are kind of uh, more loose and tight. Do we know how well the iPad does internationally? Is it a U.S. I, phenomenon? They or? have said that it has done, that they've seen a lot of growth with the iPad outside of the U.S. I think what happened is that in the U.S. and maybe Europe, the iPad had that huge spike 2012, 2013, where they made a huge amount of money and everybody thought, oh, well, here we go, rocket ship going up. And then it didn't. <laughs> And it's only been since sort of 2019 where the sales have gone back up. And I just to put the iPad number in context, they did sell $29 billion worth of iPads in, <laughs> wow. in, in fiscal 22. It is essentially at the height it was in 2012, 2013. It's down a couple billion from last year, which I think you could really see people buying iPads uh, in uh, pandemic lockdowns and things yeah. like that. But like, a, I know that everybody's focused on growth. I, I get it. But if the iPad's disappointment is that it's settled in as a $30 billion-ish a year <laughs> business, the iPad's doing okay. It's not taking over the world. There's no doubt about it. It's not reaching the heights that the Mac has been reaching lately. And yet it has it has come from those years in the doldrums where it was down in the teens back up to around $30 billion a year pretty just by apple standards it's kind of an okay business but i think by most standards it's doing pretty well yeah also, also you really have to compare <laughs> the, the tone of this of this call with all the other calls that a lot of us have been reading for the past week week and a half where like uh, you have facebook's which is like yeah uh yeah we lost half B our value BS, over BS, the past year we're, yeah we're doing, <laughs> and we're and our we're and basically captain queeg is going to be chasing that white whale all the way down to the bottom of the ocean Google saying we did well, we didn't grow as much as we wanted to, but here are reasons why the investments that we're making in the future are positive investments. We are very aware of the challenges that, that face us and we're addressing them. Whereas Apple is, we made a fortune. We would have made a little bit more of a fortune had it not been for A, B, and C. Uh, and by the way, please, we're not going to be, be, be this, this successful every quarter. I mean, that, that was almost a direct quote. Like, we are not going to have a record quarter 
every quarter. Come on. I mean, they're, you, you know, <laughs> you know uh, even Lewis Hamilton sometimes doesn't win the F1. Come on. Uh, so, yeah, that, so I mean, the whole upbeat tone of this thing, when you, especially when you have lots of things to be upbeat about, it really is interesting compared to every other call that we've been reading and listening to for the past week or two. Uh, Captain, by the way, it was Ahab who chased the white whale. Captain Quig was looking for the right. strawberry ice cream in the, in the freezer. It was gone. It was disappeared. But it, but well, I'm, well, in my defense, either one of them would be a balls. better CEO yes. and, and have, <laughs> at Facebook than uh, uh, I, I, I know I do charts, but I don't normally uh, watch financial uh, television. But right before the Apple results come out, I like to turn on CNBC <laughs> and see what they're saying. Yeah. And they were pulling their hair out. I mean, they're like, oh, God, tech <laughs> industry, it's destroyed. Apple's going to destroy it further. Or, and what, then there's the one guy who's like, no, I'm bullish on Apple. Apple will save us. And that guy <laughs> always does that. And he's always right, at least so far. But um, the doom and gloom, uh, I hadn't really realized how much financial people were like looking at the tech industry as a crater, oh, a smoking crater, yeah. right? And then you come <laughs> in and Apple strolls in the door and it is not as if Apple is without blemish. They have lots of things that you can look at and be skeptical about uh, in the, like if you analyze it, but compared to the rest of the tech industry, oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah.